So now that we have an IP address set up in our system, let's talk about using some command line troubleshooting tools. And when I'm trying to troubleshoot IP connectivity, I actually find it much easier to do with the command line than in the GUI. So I'm going to come down to my start. I'm going to right click and run CMD. Now you have some PowerShell command tools that will do some of these same things. You've um, but we're going to stick with some basic old style command line tools, which will actually work in PowerShell. And then we'll talk about some of the PowerShell alternatives. So first off is IP config. IP config will display your current IP configuration. And so we'll see IP address, subnet, mass default, gateway. Now, when you have a DHCP assigned address, and you look at it in your configuration in the GUI, it will tell you obtain IP address automatically, DHCP assigned, but it won't necessarily tell you what that IP address is. And you're going to have to dig for that a little bit. Going to command line and doing IP config will tell you immediately. Now, just a straight IP config gives you basic information. If you want more, you can issue the command IP config forward slash all. And this will give you more information. So host name, primary DNS suffix, node type, if IP routing is enabled, is one's proxy enabled, what's the description, what's the physical address, is DHCP enabled, yes or no, is auto configuration for IPv6 enabled, yes or no, here's the uh, link local address, the IPv4 address, the uh, DNS servers. If you have this set via DHCP, then it's going to say DHCP enabled, yes. It will give you the IP address. It will also give you when the lease was obtained and when the lease expires. So that becomes really useful information. Now, a couple of other things you can do with uh, IP config. Let's do an IP config forward slash release. Now, if I do this, it actually isn't going to do anything. It's going to generate an error message for me because this is something we will use for DHCP assigned addresses. Basically what it does is it releases all of your IP address leases. So if you're testing DHCP and you're wondering if your DHCP is working correctly, you can release addresses and then you can do an IP config forward slash renew. Again, this is going to fail for me because I don't have any DHCP assigned adapters here. But the renew will go out and force a renewal of IP addresses or IP address leases. Now, the reason this is useful to do uh, when you're testing DHCP, the reason the release is useful to do, is if you have an address and you go to renew it and you can't contact your DHCP server, it will give you an error, but it'll keep your IP address. And so I've watched techs do this, and so they'll do an IP config forward slash renew. It can't contact the uh, DNS or DHCP server, but they still have an IP address, so they assume that it worked. By releasing it, then you actually disable your address, so you're non-functional. And if you renew it, you'll know for sure that it worked if you get a new address back. So um, one other thing to know about the IP config command is you can use your IP config to display your DNS cache. So the command is IP config forward slash display DNS. And this will show you your DNS cache. Now remember the way this works is computers communicate using IP addresses. We communicate using names. So I go to www.google.com. I don't type in the Google IP address. But the computer has to communicate via IP addresses. So it does a DNS lookup, uh, looks in the cache. It does a DNS lookup if it needs to. Looks in host files if it has one of those available. It resolves the name and then it stores in its cache this name resolves to this address. This will display the display DNS displays my current DNS cache. Now, if I think I've got some bad information in that cache, I can do IP config forward slash flush. DNS and that will flush my DNS resolver cache and now if I do display DNS you'll see I don't have anything in there so this is a way to manage that DNS cache and typically you're not going to worry about this too much unless 
you think that you've got some bad information in your DNS cache. So something got corrupted, something got poisoned, or you know somebody just moved a device. You switch the IP address of a machine, all the mach- uh, clients that were connected to it had the old address, you had to flush the DNS cache and have it re-resolve so it starts going to the right machine now, or the right IP address. All right, a couple of other tools for testing that we'll use a lot are ping and trace route. So I can ping, I'm going to ping my default gateway, 192.168.4.1. And the ping will ping four times by default. So you see reply from 192.168.4.1, how many bytes, how long it took, what the TTL was. Remember the TTL is a mechanism in IPv4 that prevents endless loops. So let me ping another address, 8.8.8.8, which is that publicly accessible uh, web server. And you can see we pinged that, how long it took. This one's outside my network. It went farther away. It, the TTL is at 113. It started out at 128. This started out at 64. So my ping shows me that I have connectivity. Now, one of the things you want to watch for here is the reply from. So the ping, let me ping something that doesn't exist, 192.168.5.22. So the ping will give you a reply from, or it will give you a request timed out, or it will give you this, the destination host unreachable. Now, if you look at this, you look and you say reply, reply, reply. Hey, that means we got a response, right? Actually, we didn't. Look at what it actually says. Reply from 192.168.5.10. That's my IP address, not who I pinged. And the reply was, yeah, destination host is unreachable. So sometimes when I've seen text do this, they'll be testing connectivity with a ping, and they'll see, oh, I pinged, I got four replies, everything's fine. You need to look and make sure they're not destination host unreachable. Now look at the difference here. This one says ping statistics for uh, the address sent for, received for. Here, ping statistics for, sent for, received for, but it didn't actually receive what we want. What we got was, and that's why we need to watch this, destination host unreachable. Okay, what do we use ping for? We use ping to verify connectivity. So I'll use ping if I want to test and make sure I can connect to something on my network. Now, an easy way to do that, and I did this just a second ago, is to ping your default gateway. So I can ping my default gateway, and if I have that, that means my network connection works. It doesn't mean I can get out to the rest of the network, but it means I can at least get to my default gateway. So let's start putting a couple of these commands together. I can do an IP config to find my default gateway. I can ping my default gateway, and that will verify if I have network connectivity. Okay, then if I want to test farther out, I will use, I'll ping to... A public address. Now, something to be aware of is not all sites will allow pings. And it's a security issue, right? They'll block pings because there are some security issues with allowing them. Now, 8.8.8.8 actually is one that does reply or does allow pings. So that tests my connectivity outside my network because this is on a different network. Now, something else I can do is I can use this to kind of verify name resolution. So I can ping www.google.com. Now, google.com has to reply, has to resolve to an IP address. And you can see right here it did. We're pinging www.google.com, and then in square brackets it tells me the IP address. So that means my name resolution works. I was able to resolve google.com to an IP address. If I were to ping www. let's make up a random name. That can't resolve the name. So we see here ping request could not find what the heck were you talking about? Please check the name and try again. So that indicates that that name resolution didn't work. Now, one thing you want to be aware of is I told you just a second ago Actually, before we do this, let's backtrack real quick. I'm going to go back to the IP config, display DNS. And now I should see google.com resolved here. And this happened when I went to ping google.com. So resolve the name, and then it stored it in my DNS cache. Okay, 
Something you want to be aware of with ping is that not all sites allow ping responses. So let me ping Microsoft.com. Microsoft actually is allowing them. I'm going to have to find somebody else who doesn't. Let's see if CNN.com is allowing them. Hey, what do you know? Everyone I'm trying to hit today is allowing pings. You will occasionally run into an issue where you try to ping a site that doesn't allow pings. And we'll do this if we want to test connectivity to the internet, right? Can I get there? I want to ping a site on the internet. This will tell me my DNS works. This tells me I have communication. Great. But occasionally you'll get something where it pings and it will give you the name, the IP address, and then says request timed out four times. Okay. All that means is that they're probably blocking pings. That doesn't mean their site is actually down. It it's just a security issue that they're blocking them. What you're looking for here is, did it resolve the IP address, even if you get request timed out? All right, one more tool I want to introduce you to. So ping we use to verify connectivity, right? We make sure that our connectivity works. The other thing that we can use is a tool called Traceroute. Or, and it's Traceroute in it's Traceroute, R-U-T-E, in Linux and Cisco. In uh, Microsoft, it's TraceRT. So I'm going to TraceRT, www.google.com. So what Traceroute does is it actually tries to discover the path of devices that we go through. And so you see here it's showing me hop by hop every device that we're hitting on our way to google.com. So you see, here's my default gateway, and then now we're in my ISP's network. And then some of these are actually going to resolve to different um, names. These first five didn't, but these actually displayed the name for us. And we can see where it actually leads us all the way to 142.251.33.68. Just in case you're curious, this is probably in Seattle. So I hit a Google server in Seattle. Traceroute is good, and we'll use this more internally sometimes and externally. So if I have a multi-site network, I can traceroute and see which devices my traffic goes through to make sure that I have my routing working correctly, making sure the traffic is going where I want it to go. Okay, that's what we use Traceroute for. Now I want to show you one other little trick with ping that I find really useful. So when we ping an address, let me do 2.168.5.12, which is another server I have up. When I ping an address, apparently I have that server shut down at the moment. So five, hey, 5.11 is up. Okay, cool. We'll ping that one. It pings four times. Now, that's great, but that doesn't help if you're having intermittent connection issues. So intermittent connection issues can be really, really hard to track down. And it can show up in a couple of different ways. Your connection can drop or your connection can get really, really slow. So we can use ping to actually test that. And the way we'll do it is ping... 192.168.5.11 space dash T. And that says basically do this forever until things time out. Or until I time it out. Not until things time out. Until I time it out. So it's basically an eternal ping. Now the way I break this is I hit control C and that breaks me out of it. All right. What this does is this allows me to look at statistics over time. So if I run this for a long time and I have intermittent, intermittent connection issues, I might see this go from reply, 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 request timed out, request timed out, request timed out, reply, reply, reply. Okay, that means I dropped connectivity there for a few minutes, and that gives me something that I can go look at. The other thing is with my time here, I can look at that time to see if this stays relatively constant 
or if things get really slow. So if I go from 1 millisecond, 1 millisecond, 10, 12, 13, 400, you know, 2,816, 6,400, that tells me that that connection got really slow for some reason. And so I can use this to capture that in. Now the problem is this is going to scroll off your screen. So what you do is you do ping the address, redirect the output to, I'm going to just say test.text. And now this is actually running, but what it's doing is it's redirecting output to that test file, test.text. Now at this point you don't want to close your window. You can minimize it, that's fine. Minimize it, keep going about your day, do whatever you're doing. I actually ran one of these over a weekend once trying to uh, find an intermittent problem. And when I came back in and I told the client, you know, don't close this window, just let it run. So I come in on Monday morning, I open it back up, I hit control C, and that breaks me out of it. And then open up notepad and do test.text. And then I could scroll through and I can just run down through and I could see my res uh, responses. And if I'm getting solid replies all the way through consistent time, that means I've got a good solid connection. If I'm seeing occasional request time doubts, if I'm seeing the time jump around a lot, it means I have an unstable network connection. So that is a trick that I will use for diagnosing intermittent network connections. Now, one more thing, and this is just something I do for the fun of it. Um, it's kind of useful for me. Let's say I'm rebooting a server remotely. I know the server's IP address. I need to reboot the server, and I'm waiting for it to come back up. I will ping that server, 192.168.5.12, which is currently offline, dash T. And then I'll just kind of walk away from it. And it'll do request timed out, request timed out, request timed out. And once that server comes back up, I'll start getting replies. And so this way I can, you know, just kind of look at it. And as soon as I start getting replies, I know, all right, server's coming back up. I should be able to connect to it here in just a few more seconds. And so that's something that I will do when I'm rebooting a server remotely just to see when it comes back up. If I'm in the room with the server that I'm rebooting, that's not a big deal. If I am not in the room, that actually becomes very convenient. Okay, now I promised you that I was going to talk about a PowerShell alternative to some of these. And I tend to use these more than the PowerShell alternatives. One of the instances where I'm just way more comfortable with these commands because I've been using them a lot longer. So in PowerShell, let's see if we can blow this text up a little bit. Let's go to Properties and Font. I'm just going to blow this up to make it a little easier for you to read on my screen. Okay, the command in PowerShell is test-connection. And this is a replacement for the ping command. And it can actually do quite a bit. So I'm just, we're not going to run it, but I do want to show you the help on test uh, dash connection, and we're going to pipe that through more. Mm, I haven't updated my help on this system yet. So let me say no to that yet, and we'll just look at the syntax real quick. All right, test connection. We can test to a computer name. We can set it as a background job. We can set all kinds of other options, including authentication, test on specific protocols, test with a specific count or number of attempts. Uh, so you can see we've got, it's basically ping on steroids. We can do a lot more with it. We can set different delays. I mean, we can do a lot more with the test connection. It's a lot more flexible than ping. I tend to use ping still just because it's something that I'm a little more comfortable and familiar with at this point. I've been using it longer. So I tend to do that. But... Test Connection is another great tool, and if you can't quite get what you need with ping, if you want to test you know, to something other than a regular ICMP uh, port, if you want to test on a different protocol, Test Connection is a great tool for that. Okay, there you go. Some command line tools and tips for troubleshooting network connectivity.